Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, uh, welcome to our uh, Friday breakdown stream. I hope everybody's doing well today. Hope y'all are enjoying your Friday. It's not, it's a bit cold here, but you know, we out here, we doing it. Man, where were you? The stream has started about oh, 10 minutes ago. So we will, we'll jump in it. Um, I hope I hope you guys like this new little thing. I, I was thinking like, sometimes I would like to use a computer while the stream is starting and like, see if I can set some things up or whatever. And um, I was like, I already made this. Why not have it here? It, it sort of fits the, the 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 theme I'm going for already. So, but yeah, so. If you, excuse me, if you have noticed, <coughs> um, from the title, we're going to be looking at a great artist, but before we do that, if you'd like to get in contact with me, um, you can tag me in the Medicaid Discord and the Dwight Residency channel and respond to you over there, or you can tag me, um, in the uh, on Twitter at Anubis underscore three one hundred, and I'll respond to you over there. Um, I'm pretty responsive over socials, but yeah. Um, if you've noticed <coughs> from the title, we're looking at the work. Oh, hello, of Sasha Gerbinik, um, also known as Graphoman on Twitter at Graphoman one. We sort of stumbled upon his work. Um. <coughs> I think in one of the early, very early streams when we were looking at, um, <coughs> when we were just like generally looking at art on foundation and, and like how to find good art. And so I was scrolling through foundation yesterday and, uh, found out that he's, he minted this piece and then I was going through his profile again and I was, I decided, I was like, this, <laughs> this would be a good artist to host, uh, and ha and have for the artist breakdown. So, um, we'll be looking at his one of one collection on the foundation mostly. I checked out his Hicket Nank art, and I and I personally want to showcase the, his uh, foundation collection just because I I like it a lot better. And it's again one of ones. Um, as you'll see, it's fully full fledged paintings that are really masterful in, in ways <laughs> so again the his foundation is right here you click on it um and on foundation it is sasha garbanyuk right here um and they have seven pieces meant on foundation um and i, and I really quite I, I really quite like a lot of them. um his <laughs> his bio is uh visual artist um illustrator printmaker dreamer from the east sorry i'm just taking off one of my jackets it's fucking too warm you know you gotta when it's cold outside you gotta turn up some of the heat but then you put on sometimes too many layers <laughs> um but anyways as as always you know what we do it we, we, we're going to look at a few pieces, look at the PFS, read the description, and uh, talk about the pieces, because I, I really like his work. It's it, it's quite nice. Uh, it is very well done. <laughs> I mean, we I think we can look at all of them, actually. Um. Uh, After city walking, no, before city walk. <laughs> so, again, I, I when I stumbled, I I I, I, very, I stumbled upon this person's work like six months ago. So so, it's been a while, and looking at it again, it's it's actually quite captivating. And I, and I'm surprised some pieces haven't sold, though most of his pieces have sold. So, you know, you know, they out here. Making art, um, 
No, yeah. So this piece is called Lemenskaitis. Uh, I I hope I pronounced that correctly. It, it says I think it's a name. Let me Google that real quick. <clears throat> Decorated with hanging roots. Is a South American coral snake species. Oh. Decorated with hanging ribbons or hanging roots. <laughs> so it's it sort of fits the tree, right? Yeah, well, sort of. And the story says, <laughs> um, this is a story about childhood, or the description says, this is a story about childhood and an endless summer. But friendship, which is forever in you, is forever. Um, the origin and the point to which we return. Um, <clears throat> So, well, we like to zoom in, but as always, we open the IPFS because we can fully zoom in like this. <laughs> Look how good this is, huh? This dude's shoes. That's like, that's a really nice figure. And it's like, I'm pretty sure I'm repeating myself when it comes to this sort of, this specific painting, because this is the exact painting we looked at the first time. Um, and so what I have, I don't think really has changed, right? It's a traditional painting. Um, yeah. His, his, uh, the way he puts the descriptions, um, changes, I'm pretty sure. Cause it's in, in the later, <clears throat> in the later works, you, you can see what is it, um, size and, and medium, I'm pretty sure. But here it's still, we can tell this is, um, a traditional painting, um, to me, it feels like it's oils, um, just based on some of the blending down here and the, and the way some of the stuff is blended. Um, I hope if it's acrylics, I am very surprised, but it feels, <clears throat> it feels like it's oils, maybe even some watercolor. I say that just some of the tones here remind me of watercolor, but. If you thin your, your paints down enough, you can sort of emulate watercolor on, on canvas. I know it's because I have done it. <laughs> um, it works best with acrylics though. Um, so here, let me get rid of this backdrop. And so again, it's like, it, it's this piece about childhood and, and friendship, but, and, and you can see it captivates the idea of like, not childhood exploration and childhood wonder. Um, it's very similar to, um, Terrell, an artist we had looked at earlier. One of the artists broke down the uh, recent pieces where it's just, you know, some of the stuff you do with your friends and <clears throat> now personally, I haven't done it, but I've seen it in enough popular media to know that, you know, children like to climb trees with their friends so you know, that's part of bonding with your friends and, and having uh childhood memories and, and friendships right and you can also see that um such as like sort of functioning within his own created world <laughs> just based on um the figures themselves right just the eyes the, the lack of pupils um which I think is also in itself is somewhat interesting. Uh, just because it's like, it's sort of scary in a way that it's like, um, well, like prophetic in the sense that it's sort of foretelling, you know, what happens to when you grow up and you lose that childhood wonder and, you know, you lose some friends. Although it says in the description, you know, friendships are forever, you know, you do lose some friends. And so it's, um, that's sort of how I see these characters and they're like a pupils and eyes, right? It's like, they are children, but they're just waiting to grow up at the end of the day, you know? And so, yeah, but look at, look at how nice this is. Like, oh, God damn. I lights around the fucking tree. Like that's that's a good technique, and this feels as if it's a quite a large work actually. I mean, just look how good you can zoom in and zoom in, and look how good the render detail is. So, I uh, I mean, 
is great. He's very great. Like, I mean, just look at the, and the, 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 the difference in tones. You know, although there isn't a lot of blue tones, you see it present here. Mostly in, in, in a little bit of the greenery, but just mostly warm um, tones throughout the whole painting, which is actually quite nice. It's a, it, it makes it makes you feel sort of like a nostalgic sense of of childhood and friendship. It makes me want to go climb a tree, though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I do want to go climb a tree um, because of this painting. Then, like, look, I mean, and also look, these kids got mad kicks, bro. I never had shoes that good when I was well. Maybe I did. I actually don't fucking remember what shoes I had when I was a kid. My old purple shoes. I mean. Oh. Interesting. I mean, at this point, like, you barely, you barely notice that and it barely deters from the work, so. We, I have to, I have to really appreciate this figure leaping forward, right? Because it's also a representation of sort of growing up. And, and and moving forward with your friendships and stuff is to take the leap, right? And the, the best thing they've included is, you know, you could fall. It has, the kid hasn't grabbed the the stick yet, so. Again, it's, it's a really nice sort of, I really like this painting, actually. You should, it's like, a, it's like, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's like sort of instills a nice feeling of happiness um, with, within you as a viewer, you know, and like calmness. At least that's how I read it, you know, <laughs> personally. And I, I think this is a, a beetle. I don't know what this beetle is. I wish I knew what this is because I'll Google it and see what it means. But I, unfortunately, if anybody knows and, and comments it in the in the description, I'll come back and comment what it means in the painting. Um, so I would really, really like to know what this beetle represents. It's sort of very similar to one uh, to a scarab or some of the beetles we have in Egypt. I, I, you know, you can't be fully sure. Well, this is minted in July, about seven, six, no, five months ago. Well. You know, they out here grinding. <laughs> so this was Lemniscatus. I hope I pronounced it correctly. I probably pronounced it differently than the first time. Um, but we will move on to Warlord, which I believe is their second minted work. Um, Warlord stuck between worlds, one of my works from the Hokey People series. JPEG 38, 3844 by 3326. Actually, this is... This is a good little thing. Um, in the space, in, in in all artistic practices, PNG is the best format. Legitimately, PNG is the best format. It's the format you should always use for your photo ex exportation. Unfortunately, the size limits on fucking foundation are ass. They're 50 megabytes. And so works the size on PNG are in the megabyte are in the hundreds of megabytes it's guaranteed i know this because the uh, um one of one of all almost all my works on foundation are minted jpegs because they're over 100 megabytes each png and the mo my most recent work there on foundation is it's the, the the actual photoshop file is two gigs and the exported png is ha um 500 megabytes so half a gig so Although it sucks, it's sort of this weird limitation that we have with fucking foundation. But anyways, so this is Warlord. Um, and again, you can see sort of the same figure utilization coming back in the eyes. But, you know, that would be IPFS and we zoom in. Yo, it's taking a while to load. You know, it's going to be a good one. Oh, I can tell it's going to be a good one. I can see the fucking texture already. Let's see. 
I haven't zoomed in on this, I think. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's actually crazy. <laughs> they're, they're sitting on a tank that's bent. That sort of feels like it's a, a, a Francis Bacon reference. I don't know why. Skin with a nail through it. And then three in the background. Wow. All right. Even just disregard, like, you know, uh, <clears throat> incomplete disregard of figures, incomplete disregard of what's around them. <laughs> this is, uh, this is crazy. And then little sort of kite figure floating there. And then figure also playing with a stick. I mean, I, I personally have done this. Whenever I'm around water, I've played with sticks in the water. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, it still has a very sort of childhood, like, it has a childhood feeling to it, sort of. Just because I think of the way the figures are in, although they do look like adult figures, it still like feels as if like, well, it's, it, it is, I think that's, the fantastical element that's present within the work um <clears throat> it, again right it's, it's extremely fantastical i mean like there's a flap of skin with a nail through it um the figures are red flowing and and like weird organic figures are coming out of this distorted tank right and this thing sort of goes from realistically rendered to like weird blob-like formations in what I think appears to be like, yeah, it's like a lake, right? But then there's this random flap. Well, never mind, that's actually not a flap. I realize now that's just like, could be wrong. Or also it could be legit, just a random flaps of skin. But it could just be Earth, you know? This looks very just... But this stands out though, so... I mean, again, right? It's just my the personal reading and then... You have it's very it's a, it has a very good indicator of war just through the tank and even if you remove the tank you would sort of get it just through the presence of this bar and the barbed wire and this I don't know what you call this but we've seen this in, in enough popular media to associate it with war um, that's a fact oh I can't I can't go in further but so this here also we just have to appreciate like the the nice red tones because it's like shifting between warm and cold tones from from cold to warm up to bottom but it's like you just again it's you have the fog right that sort of carries the the, the glow of the water i mean it, it's very fitting of warlord as a title right warlord stuck in stuck between world and so, this is playing more into the um, fantastical element of the work. Yeah, let's zoom in on the tube. We haven't checked out the three a little bit. But again, like, look at this texture. Now, I don't know if this is done digitally or... I can't see paint blobs. I see variants in brush. But that you can do that in Photoshop now. I've seen that enough. To realize that you can you can sort of do that in Photoshop. <laughs> um, I don't know. I wish I wish it said. Well, I mean, I, it could be. I am trying, uh, if you're like, why are you so silent? I'm, I'm trying to figure out if this is painted by hand or not digitally, yeah, you know. No, that's painted. 
Unless they're using the Photoshop and Pasto Painter, those those really cool painted, I can see shadows there. So this feel this actually, if this is a, a real oil painting, like holy fucking shit! Yeah, the music has gone a bit low. I, I tried to have an earlier like uh, <laughs> Christmas theme thing, and it just got super fucking like anime child vibes i was like i know this that, that ain't me like i, I like lo-fi by this is this also isn't my favorite type of lo-fi music but it's the copyright free shits because you can't use music no more this is why i will be a pirate forever <laughs> i i kept in i mean look at this yeah they they know what the fuck they're doing Like legitimately, just like right, red, and then some purple tones already introduced into the figures, right? That then are carried um, with the sort of purple circle in the tree, and then that transforms into full black, and it's like sort of a nice gradient, um, sort of like a three, a three color gradient, if you will, from red to to dark blue, and it's uh, it's actually great, and then. Also, you, you one must note, right, the difference, or the, 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 okay, right, way to zoom in randomly, but these two figures are in red, and this is one of the only figures that's rendered in, in, in flesh tones, all right, so this feels as if, I mean, this could be the figure, the artist themselves putting themselves within the work, or what you as a, as a visual, as a viewer, um, are supposed to associate with within these three figures, and it and it works because they also have shoes. They're human shoes, a little bit untied. Um, the figure is smoking a joint. I don't know if you can see that or a cigarette. Okay, brave. You just zoom in randomly wherever you want. And right, that's that's a, that's something being smoked, right? And they were looking off into the distance. So I, I again, this is. Very detailed work. Like, look at this. Holy fuck, brave. I'm gonna fucking... Purple, orange, purple, some green. Like, grayish green there. Bright reds. Right, like, look at just the tonal shifts in, in the tank alone. Okay. And then this. I, I really like this part for some reason. My eye keeps going back. I just like the difference. It's like as if it's rust or something, right? But... From a distance, just feels like, what is it? You know, the, is the tank bleeding? Well, it's the tank is bleeding, right? But it's just the rust and and just the effects of the of this water around it and the setting that it's in. So again, it's it's really great. It really is. I I applaud Sasha for their skill, insane skill. So this is a warlord. We will go to nursery. And again, right, you see this in all of his works, right? It all fits the same universe with these figures. And that's one of the things I really like. Nursery from the Hokey People series, JPEG 3005, 3050 by 2431 pixels. Oh, wow. Wow. Yo, this is some James Jean shit. <laughs> I, I, wow. <laughs> Just look at the highlight around the hands. Oh, the picture's a bit blurry, but it's good. Look at that. And just the silence figure, right? Nursery, it's the, the motherly figure telling you, shh. But it's also sort of like a scary figure because it's all red, the lack of eyes. Um, usually, mothers don't shush their children, especially their babies. You know, you coddle them, you, I don't know, you, you move them around a little bit, you rock them, right? You, you don't look them menacingly with your finger across your mouth. 
All right, and then the figure is already unearthly in this sense just because of its, like, well, other than the skin tone, it's just, like, the, the appearance of the beetle just wrapped around it as if it's part of its glove. All right, and then um, you can see, like, presence of other, like, beetles around or, like, these bugs, and it's, like, it's also it could be the nursery for these animals, right? Who knows? Again, it's... Also, look at the tree. I, I, part of me feels as if they're inspired by James Jean, because James Jean u u utilizes these sort of brush strokes, these specific brush strokes, uh, and these specific abstractions um, within his paintings. But usually, they're bold colors, and so this artist is just like is utilizing them to, for texture within the tree bark. And again, this is. Just looking at this, this is again painted by hand. Like holy shit, oils. If the oh my god, like <laughs> this is insane levels of work. Like I, I'm just staring at it and just like taking in the detail. Right, like look at this. I w I wish that the image was in as blurry just so we can see this texture for f truly what it is, but like how nice this moth is or i don't know what this bug is you know i call it a beetle i think a moth a cicada i don't know bro je ne sais pas monsieur all right that's that's i mean look at the little glow around here right man it's 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 so well done holy shit You see me trace the, I'm tracing it. That's like usually what I do in my mind. I'm just like following the leading lines and it's just like, look how good that is. Right? Like you get carried a little nice square here. All right. And everything sort of connects. All right. You can enter and leave and multiple enter the figure and enter the background and leave the work at multiple points and it's done well enough to where these don't fully lead you outside of the work you, you sort of there's close entries by that lead you back in immediately right i mean also like look at that hair yo that's a little nice little swirl yo <laughs> Again, really great work. Like, holy shit. <clears throat> I, I mean, I, mean, I uh, they, they haven't minted a lot, but I hope, like, you know, they, they, they incorporate, like, more human elements, too, into this, like, more realistic real-life world elements, or more real-world elements into this, because it would be cool as hell to see how the real world would be sort of fictionalized within this artist's eyes, you know, it's like, this is, this is, this is actually fucking great. Hey, all right, Lurka Fund. Oh, this was sold privately. I mean, this is great. We will move on to Zola from the Hokey People series. Sorry, if you're like, why you go silent again? I was just looking at it. I was like, damn, this is a really nice work. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, wow. And so we've moved on to Zola from the Hokey People series. Um, 2067 by 2840 three pi pixels um this sort of feels <laughs> i mean that's actual paint 
Okay, so this is traditionally painted and then just, I think, I don't know what's going on at the edges here. And it's so distracting. What's going on? Yeah, it feels like it's a Photoshop selection tool, sort of. I mean, I quite like it. It's, it, I, I really can't say too much about this just because it's a dark figure. There isn't a lot of things that you can notice. Um, you do notice that it, it, it is a female figure with some hair and it still has the eyes and there's this little flame. And so, again, this, this is just, I, it could be a, it, I'm pretty sure this is just a portrait of this figure called Zola. Um, again, it, 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 I can't really say too much about it other than, like, this is very nice utilization of texture. Like, it was actually impressive. I never thought to use, I, I never, I've only seen this sort of technique utilized in the space by maybe two other artists to, to paint figures. And it's actually really rich um in texture in a way that in a way that i didn't really expect now that i'm zooming fully zooming in on it uh, and even just a little paint spotter what i wish didn't happen is this weird cutting around it though that's just taking me out completely it's so bright like here's the thing right if the background is the whitest part of the work my eye will always go to the background and that's the problem the, this this tone should have been this white tone should have been darker than this right here because your eye goes to the brightest point immediately and the brightest white in this whole work is actually the border so it's like um that's one thing that's just like keeps taking me out of the work it's like the what's the brightest point it's literally not the work it's the border of the work and so uh, as you can imagine just from the texture this this could be like this, all of this could actually be black around, right? This could just carry on as the painting. And so I wish that that was, was going on because, man, it's so distracting. It's actually so distracting. Um, and also just the blurriness. I don't know what's going on. I think it, it, it legitimately could also just be the nature of the JPEG, right? Because... Legitimately, you it's stuff like this for it to be exported at this size or even bigger and make it onto foundation. It's not exported at perfect or expert quality. It's exported at good or fine quality. Um, and on JPEG, like it's exported as like poor quality just because it just like, man, it, it, file sizes. So it's kind of weird because like even object on Tez, allows you to mint a hundred megabytes, which is a lifesaver because some of the stuff I'm minting on there for myself are there like 93 megabytes PNG. I'm like, if, oh, yes, it fit. Um, so this again could just literally be lots of quality due to the JPEG because like this texture is great. Um, and you would see more of it, but just it's a wee bit blurry. We will move on to the next work. Um, it's actually, I think it's my second favorite work. I'm city walking. Um, would you rather be a giant or a midget? And who will you become under the vibe of the Metropolis Hokey People series? JPEG um, 2570 by 3259 pixels. Yes. <laughs> wow. That is actually great. What the? It's like charcoal. Some of it feels like charcoal, I swear. And then. I just wish it wasn't that blurry, but it's like, look at these little textures. 
And then the drawing. Wow, that's actually. The, the drawing of the bridge and then the rendering of the bridge that sort of starts to disappear on the graffiti and the lines and some of the background is rendered. It's actually a really smart drawing technique for like figuration and abstraction at the same time. It's actually genius here. And then you can see the car is somewhat rendered and then it just abruptly stops clean cut here and then just like it, it, this feels like he went with a pellet knife, right? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, a lot of this stuff actually, I think, is pellet knife done because that's how you, yeah, that's pellet knife. So that's the sort of texture you can get when it's really wet, just like scratch, you know? And it's sort of emulating like screen tone, like cross hatching print texture. It's actually really great. Hold on. That is interesting. Something is like, ooh. let's like see this. Maybe it's like mixed media in the sense that it's also done physically and, um, What is it? Digitally, but also legitimately. Like, yeah, because you can paint all of this and then just go in digital with the opacity brush. Because this is like. This is just a bit too weird of a line. But it also could just be me looking too much into the work, right? Because again, if this is like an earlier wash of color, right? You just got to go back there. But it's like the thing that's fucking with me is the highlight around. There, you guys probably can't see it on the screen because I, I'm looking at this on like sort of a TV screen. Um, but like, look at the sky, like, wow, it's, and I, I, I really like like that weird, creepy smile in the face, right? And then just like the blue presence of the actual sky, and then like red clouds, right, with blue presence here and there. It's even on the, on the right of the work, right? It's just, it, <clears throat> this work has employs a lot of like good techniques for like to keep your eyes at work. And it's just like the use of the texture, the brush strokes, right? The flow of the figure themselves, right? It's like, it's a really good fucking figure too. It's <laughs> like gesturally, like, oh, you can feel the motion. You can legitimately feel the motion. It's like the sort of one thing that you want to emulate as an artist. Um, well, not em well, emulate in just in the sense of like you, you should look at artists that have great, great motion within the work. And um, what is it? Like see how they function and, and strive, you know, to have good motion within your work as well. Just because it, it's like when that happens, you can see how successful it is. Get out of here, brave. Again, like, look at these little city skylights, man. That's, oh, right in the distance. Like, oh, oh, there's, there's actual perspective employed here. Correct perspective. Goddamn, bro. Well, that was, that should have been evident by this fucking... But still, to see that painted like this, like, wow, okay, they, they actually know how to... F it's like a literal mini landscape painting in the fucking corner of the painting. Wow. <laughs> okay. They they flex him, bro. They flex him. They mad flex him. This ain't cool. Like, legit, this is just like... This whole part right here is like a mini landscape painting. You could take it out as a mini landscape painting. You can actually... This would, on its own, would make a pretty good abstract like sort of painting with just the hand going through. So you just look at these, like even just the presence of these two lines right here. It's so good. I don't know why, but it's like, it's so good. And it sort of fits the work so nice. 
in this weird way. I, you know, it's like one of those things that is just visually appealing to the eyes, you know? Um, you should see the smile that's on my face. <laughs> right now, because it's like, work like this legitimately does make me smile. It's so visually interesting and so visually rich that it just like, you have fun just looking at it. And as you understand the figure and how it's done, you know, look at it's just it's just your understanding of the work gets better and better and you're like, wow. You know, and you know, like it takes some serious skill to, to pull this off. Legitimately. Some serious fucking skill to pull this sort of thing off. One hundred one hundred and ten percent. Congratulations to Sinem Sinem Sinemota, Sinemota, for ordering this because it's it's a really great piece to own. We will be moving on to Bubble I, again. If you've noticed within all of these, the Noise figure returns, and I was just saying for nursery, how 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 nice if we saw how, or this, seeing real world elements in this sort of fantastical world would be really interesting. And then look how interesting this is. Um, right, like the real world element really fucking works with this sort of thing. It's actually crazy. <clears throat> and so, again, this figure makes its comeback bubble. Um, this little creature found a bunch of different bubble gums in a strange lost house from the from the Hokie People series. JPEG. Uh, 6,041 images by 6,041 pixels. Sorry, 6,041 pixels by 6,041 pixels. Um, so it's a square painting. <clears throat> We're going to get to zoom in very nicely. Oh. And so I think what's happening here now is immediately off the bat is this is traditionally painted and taken into Photoshop and then um, has has the the image like has the uh chromatic aberration effect applied to it which really sort of fits the fantastical element because you don't you sort of sense it around the edges and then until you zoom in you sense it in the corner too it's much stronger it's a little trick but you sort of sense it in the corner a little bit more than in the middle and it sort of fits again but <laughs> right, this figure found strange bubble gums and started chewing them and it blew up in his face and it's like can be taken as you know like you don't sometimes like you will you, you don't take risks that you, you really don't know the outcome of or whatever because right? it's just like the bubble gum is blown up in his face but it's also a, a, a light hearted sort of message right because it is a child and it's just bubble gum um the fear effect sort of because of the lack of the pupils again but like that's actually cool like the, the detail in the bubble is actually crazy and little ink washes too wow and you can't sort of tell where the bubble ends and the figure begins like un unless here you're at the corner but when you zoom in that much it actually sort of blends in with the actual skin tones of the figure and then, it, like, also look at just that neck. Like, <laughs> this is very good use of brush strokes as well. And and <clears throat> my favorite thing that's happening with that is like, right, you get the the very hectic use of brush strokes that looks very nice. And also the one thing that they tell you not to do in art school, which is put an outline. You know, there's a really nice outline. But the trick is with these outlines is you sort of make them close to the, the figure's skin tone of a different color. Just not black. Because that makes them stand out way too much. But other than that, when you when you include these sort of um, similar tone outlines to the figure, it helps blend in the figure with the, with the background in really nice ways. And it just, like, the figure fits within the world and the, the painting you've established. And so it, it, it's, it's fucking great. Yeah, like, I just, <clears throat> I, you, we can't really say too much about the work, like other than just the fact, you know, like, hey, 
don't take random risks. You shouldn't be taking food from strangers or like food on the floor that that can be applied to, to much more than food, right? But again, and you can you can appreciate this work just for its aesthetic um, choices because it's really fucking nice, uh, legitimately. Like the chromatic aberration fits this so well in in such a cool way. Let's look at this. Even just like the texture on top of the figure, right? It, it, and it's like it, this work has gone into the mixed media realm, right? Because this tone isn't present here. And I don't think they painted this tone manually, or they could have painted it where this sort of like texture pattern can be applied in photo. Well, actually. Well, I mean, well, that's the thing with Photoshop, you can get a canvas texture and, and when you hit overlay, it starts to take the colors behind it. Um, but this also feels like it's actual texture pattern, like goddamn. I'm trying, yeah, okay, this is, I think this I actually painted, this, yeah, this might be fully painted on canvas. Yeah, look at, look at this bleeding in between the, I, I, I well, I, I, it could be. I think so. Wait, I don't. When you start to zoom in like this, and when you when when I know it's been messed with in Photoshop, my brain goes like. But see, like the thing, I actually no, I'm pretty sure that's just canvas texture, just because like you can just go back after all this figure has been painted, and all this has dried, and and just like apply this after, right? So yeah, yeah, it's really it it, it's, it has a lot of good texture. Even if it's done digitally, it's really good texture, even on the face and the nose. Not everything, bro. Even here, it's like, this sort of feels like it's a little hint of an eye, right? But, because there's like, this should be dark, but who knows what's behind this little bubble. Got a little problem here that this kid has caused for himself. <laughs> yeah, this is really great work. Oh. Look at these brush strokes. Look at this blending. Like, oh. So, we will move on to the last work they have minted. Uh, this is minted on November 27th. Um, ability to wait. Which of the, of the creatures is more patient? The spider that twisted its web between the ages or the person who froze? In anticipation of a sting. Hokey People series 6,500 by 5,675 pixels. And I was staring at this and I was like, this is fucking. Oh my god. Um, so this is utilizing the chromatic aberration with the actual screen tone brush from Photoshop. But other than that, it, it's I think it's painted traditionally and it's done really fucking well I, I think this is my third favorite fucking mint they have on there just like look at all this just like visual information and like just tonal shifts that you go through right like even just well that's the hand hold on I'm trying to go to face right look like the mouth and the there's purples in the mouth with the red right and then slowly turn into sc like skin tones i mean i think they may have painted under this whole thing red actually you can sort of tell by this color in the background like the the, the underpainting was done in red and then they went on top and and it went with the the skin tones and I really gotta say, like, that hat is looking very nice. That's a very nice hat. Um, and even to, to the point of the ability to wait, right? Like, the figure is sort of being washed out as if they're decaying. And it says, like, what happens? Like, who's more patient, right? The, the spider waiting to sting you? Or are you waiting to fucking... You freezing and hoping for the spider to leave? 
which I think is is actually really nice. It's like a, a really nice, sort of nice like conceptual like thought question to ask to the viewer, right? Um, even look at the detail on here. Let's, let's go to the spider. I don't know. Zayma, Z Brave had fixed its zoom in thing, and now it's weird. But look, that's <laughs> look. Wow. Maybe the little nuts. <laughs> it's cool. Like, it's a very nice spider. It feels as if it's a black widow just by the little. It is a black widow, just that thing. But again, it's. The eyes from a distance sort of feel like they glow, right? It's as if the spider is staring at the Well, the spider is staring at them. Again, the sort of. The same figure with the lack of eyes has made it. And also, one thing that you notice is, is uh, I, I really didn't point out too much, is um, the figure sort of exaggeration that's happening, right? Where, like, the hands are as big as the head here, right? When they shouldn't be. And it's, like, it's the sort of stylistic exaggeration that you gain from, like, just knowing how to draw really, really fucking well. Legitimately. So it's, like... He's a, this artist is able to do this because they have studied and I guarantee they're able to draw. They will, I know if you go look at their foundation pieces, they know how to draw bodies very, uh, their uh, Hick at Nunk pieces. They know how to draw bodies very, very well. And so uh, this is an artist that knows what they are doing 110%. They are, well, I don't want to say trained, but they, they actually like, you know, they've, they've trained themselves and, and, and have done their studies and their anatomy studies that they need. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to achieve this sort of quality. Like, yo, look at these fingers, bro. Like, purple for the shadows. Like, you need good, you need training and practice to actually start to learn how to use colors in this way. I know this because I've, I've been drawing and painting and making art for a while, and I'm still fully not, not there. So, again, it's this is... I, I really just like visually I really like this fucking work. <laughs> it's such a nice work. Like so much is happening and your eye keeps moving from the figure to the hand to the spider back to the head figure. Like face, hand, spider, head, face, hand, spider, head. Right? And just like when you zoom in and you see that or like you don't even need to zoom in to sense that there's like a little bit of chromatic aberration happening. But it's done so nicely that it, it also like helps bring it into like the digital age, right? As an NFT, so uh, to me, it's like, like wow. Again, you can see where they, like they were drawing the face. Now that's too small, too small. Oh, this is where it should be. All right, and then and yeah, I have to. Oh my God, brave your hand, like. You can see sort of the pencil markings that they were drawing to come back after they painted, which is something I actually forgot that you can do. So you can paint on top of your paint with pencils. I need to start doing that because one of the biggest things is like, oh, I paint a figure, I draw it, and I start to lose my shit. I'm like, oh, fuck. But yeah, you can you can go back on top of paint with pencil and it actually fucking works. I'll start doing that personally. And also, just like the screen tone texture because it's set to overlay on the dark areas it doesn't show up so it's like it has nice variance and um the cue for you to know the chromatic aberration is happening is, is just like in the sky just through the screen tones themselves right and so it's like it's it's very smart usage of fucking texture and again like the storytelling in the world is being built is like who are these um bulky people right and now we know there's is a, this is a whole series sort of depicting Hokey people and also the appearance and the presence of Hokey people has been established in other works like Liminis Katas. I, I, this is probably the third different way I pronounce it today, All right? But so again, this is this is sort of James Jean level of like world building and level creation where you actually sort of. He, th this artist can start naming these figures 10 years from now and w the names would fit because, you know, like this is an iconic figure. This is sort of an iconic, like the red figures are iconic in the sense, right? But this too, right? If you see this sort of figure with that, with that little gesture in multiple ways, you'll know who, in multiple paintings, you'll know who it is, right? One figure is already given a name. So uh, this sort of fantastical 
established. And again, to those watching, I really recommend you go look at if there are three works or, or actually four works that I recommend you look at. I recommend you look at the Meniscatus, fourth different pronunciation. Let's go um, nursery, city walking, and ability to, to wait because they really are um, what the hell foundation? Some of the uh, what the what, what? Some of the best um works on like some of paintings I've some of the best paintings I've seen enter the space, and I, I really compare it to fucking James Jean level of skill and and world building and creation. So it's it's fucking it's great, and I recommend everybody everybody go fucking follow them by their art. They mint on on Hecate Nunk as well. So if you can't afford their ETH prices, you can get some of their cheaper stuff. Um, but yeah, hopefully, and yeah, I'll go follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is at at Graph O Man or Graph Zero Man One on Twitter. Go follow them. Go talk to them. Their art is really great. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's stream. I I, I certainly did. I, I I fucking love this his their work and. Um, I was smiling, I was smiling throughout the whole stream just looking at the paintings, just because they're so visually interesting, and it's like, it's a visual feast for the eyes, if you will, so, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well, I certainly did, um, if you'd like to get in contact with me, just tag me in the Medicaid Discord and the Dubai Residency channel over there, and I'll respond to you, and if you'd like to get in contact with me on social, on Twitter, you can tag me at Anubis underscore 3100, and I'll respond to you over there. I'm pretty responsive. Uh, hopefully you guys again enjoyed this stream, and I'll see you guys uh, on Sunday's stream. Bye!